minutes. Hello, everybody. I'm Christian Dorr. Uh, thank you for tuning in today. We're going to have a lot of fun together. I am going to go over exactly how I start my dawdling or sketching. Dawdling is, is something I've been calling it lately, but um, I'm going to show you how I put my sketches together. My sketches are incredibly important to me. Without the sketches, I can't actually paint a painting because it's a great guide for me before I start the work. I used to years ago, not sketch prior to a painting and I found it very frustrating and it was a real journey to try and get this uh, painting finished. Um, my sketches are incredibly important to me and I want to share with you today exactly how I go about making my sketches. I moved here about 20 years ago uh, from London and from London, I came straight to Colorado and after squinting for about six weeks, because I couldn't see because it was so bright here compared to where I used to live, uh, I realized that we are completely surrounded by this beautiful countryside, nature, and it is this incredible resource. Um, and one that, because I live here, I'm an artist, I'm, I'm constantly aware of my environment, my surroundings. And so I had to capture that. I would love to paint the ocean, but I don't live near the ocean. So this is uh, something that I really, really can't stress to everybody how important and good for you it is to do. What we're doing today is very similar to when you are talking to your friend on the phone and you're doodling or you're at a PowerPoint meeting and whatnot. I, I really can't tell you how important this whole process is to me. So I want to tell you how I start, how the process for me begins. Um, every single one of you has um, shapes going on in their heads. Um, it's, you're sort of unaware of it. Um, and this exercise that I'm about to show you has given me the, the advantage of actually putting these shapes into a book and documenting them. Um, one of the things that I say to people about my class, it's incredibly easy. It's very easy to explain. The most frustrating part of the class is that it's taken my whole life to figure this out because I'm constantly learning and I would like to share this with you. So I'm going to show another shot right now of my sketchbook. What you will need for this exercise is obviously a sketchbook, piece of paper and a pencil. Um, I could show you a very, very snazzy pencil for drawing um, that most artists use, but honestly, I love sketching with this pen. So it's very good for me. It just works. I don't have to sharpen it. It's just a, basically an architect pencil that you replace the lead now and again with. Um, you don't have to sharpen it. I think it's very important that you find what works best for you. Um, I know you can get these in a dollar store for five for a dollar. So it's not expensive to, in order to buy these things. Um, so, so let's just get started. Let's, let's start from the very beginning and um, I will show you exactly how my process starts. So similar to an artist or a musician that's about to write a song or a writer with writer's block, they have to get going. So I do this very basic exercise and obviously my shapes are my trees. You'll see them in a lot of my paintings. Um, and I start off with very simple uh, tree shapes, like so. I go through the motions of putting them down to paper. I don't think about it too much, I just doodle. I'm gonna make some bigger than others, some smaller, some that talk to the birds. I'm gonna make another tree here that is slightly bigger with a seed on top, like so. Make sure that you put your shapes onto paper. It can be anything, circles, squares, cats, dogs, sky, fish, you know, anything you want, flowers. But please try to put, on, put the shapes that you have going on up in your head onto the, onto the book here, onto the sketchbook. So I'm gonna just go through the motions of making these sketches, go through one 
and then the next one here like so i'm gonna do a smaller one with a little rock down the bottom like this i'm just going to go through the motions of making these sketches and what this exercise is doing by putting these simple shapes onto the page i am literally opening up the artistic side of my brain i'm opening it up it's just a way to focus to give me a bit of confidence you know i've heard this from many people um, that this actually helps a lot of people concentrate a lot more if you're doing this than if you're actually trying to pay attention to someone if you're doodling i would encourage anybody to do this to doodle during work or on the phone and you, you actually are focusing a lot more. It must open something up in your brain and it helps with the, with the process. But, you know, what I would like you to do is spend about 10 minutes of this. I do this every day, by the way. I equate this to brushing my teeth. It's that important. I want you to fill the whole page like so. Filling right to the bottom. Fill a whole page till you get to somewhere that's sort of similar to this. All right. We're just going to do a page like so, where you're just filling the shapes, filling the shapes. And you come up with this really interesting page to me. And this is how all my paintings start. They start with a very easy process. You know, we're going to, I'm going to show you another page here, which basically documents, okay, my trees, please use my trees if you want to, but I would really encourage you to do your own shapes. They can be anything, you know, you can do a flower like so. You can do um, anything you want. Trees, more trees. I'm obsessed with my trees. But just spend time just doing the whole page and coming up with a layout like this. Next stage is we are now going to go to, a, you know, the page that I just started earlier. But obviously I would have filled this all. But just to save paper and just put it all on one page, I'm going to draw a very small, simple box shape. Don't do big, do small, no bigger than this, because if you do the whole page, you're just going to see this is going to take you all day. And what I do is I start off like I have at the top of the page here with my tree shapes, like so. Okay. And I draw another tree beside it, like so. Keep drawing your trees, keep putting these trees down. Now this is the secret weapon and the most important part of the exercise overlap your tree shapes with other tree shapes maybe slightly darker push down on the pencil to give you more pressure on your pencil to make them darker and fill the whole box like so okay and i'm not really thinking about it this i'm just doing it by overlapping the shapes you are now creating more shapes that you hadn't intentionally planned i want you to fill the whole space here filling it just like so and then when you fill the whole place and again this is mega rough here you can almost see something happening all these shapes that are coming into play here then you go back and this is the important part as well you shade in certain areas but it's very important to work on a segment at a time and then move on don't shade in an area here and then come down here and shade in another area and then go over here. If you do that, you're not going to see anything till the very end. Focus just on a segment right, right around there and just fill in an area, leave an area, fill in an area, leave an area, fill in an area, maybe make a certain area slightly lighter than the others and fill a segment in. And the reason for doing that is it gives you a bit of confidence. When you're finished with this, you'll notice, oh, I actually kind of like the look of it. It's not wonderful. This isn't a very good drawing. It's pretty rubbish, really. But you'll have filled it in and it will give you a bit of confidence, you know, make you feel good. Then you can move on to the next segment. Painting, sport, cooking, it's all about confidence. If you feel confident about it, you're typically going to get the best results when you have a little bit of confidence. So move through that process. And then when you finish this all, you'll see that you have a very intimate piece of work, an abstract piece of sketching work that looks somewhat like that. All right, just like so. Now this isn't very good, you know, it's not very good drawing to be perfectly honest with you, but it's a starting point and it's a guide for me that helps me when I go on 
to paint my painting. And you can see it's just loads of layers like we just explained, overlapping and shading. I, you know, I can still work on this thing even today. And I know this is quite old, this sketch here, but you know, it's all about just creating these wonderful lush environments from very simple shapes. And people will say to me, well, what's the point of this? Well, you can take this on afterwards and create environments, landscapes like so, that are just, you know, my tree shapes, bigger in the foreground, smaller in, in the background. And you'll create these wonderful intimate landscapes that can be created just from simple shapes and shading. You know, we can use this as well later on when we get into more ideas. Now, one of the things I actually am going to start, let me go back to myself here so I can chat to you. Uh, one of the things I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to start a series of online classes through my website um, to basically explain further processes that you can get to and further sketches you can get to. And we'll have a lot of fun exploring how these very simple shapes can turn into these magnificent drawings. So please, I'm going to probably start um, advertising my classes next week. So keep an eye out for my website. My, my website is www.christiandor.com. So check it out next week and you should see somewhere that I'm starting online classes. And then I can really explore and delve into you with techniques and whatnot. But for now, I've got half an hour. So I wanted to just get the theory across to you straight away. So if we go back to the sketch here, you'll notice it's a bird outline, okay? But if you look very closely within the shape of the bird, there's all these intricate shapes that we just did earlier on. The square is no different to the bird in this picture. We're doing exactly the same thing. The only thing that's slightly different, different is we are following the contour and the shape and the line of the bird so that all the shapes make sense. For instance, you wouldn't do uh, tree shapes of the bird going this way. They would go that way because that is the way the feathers um, are on a bird. It's quite straightforward and simple really. You know, I'll look at other drawings and sketches that I've done as well. And um, we can show you different things like for instance, I, I'll also explore ink work. It's just an outline of a beetle that I've drawn and I filled it with all my shapes. I could draw a picture of a real beetle or a real bird with real feathers, but I find there's something very interesting about the, the shapes that are going on. It sort of brings the, the, the shape of the animal to life. I'm very interested in Native American art and design. Um, I love pet petroglyphs and um, I love the way a very simple shape can tell an amazing story. Why are we so drawn to petroglyphs? We're so fascinated by them. It's the same sort of theory. Um, so now that I've explained the process to you, I wouldn't mind going over a few little um, sketches, techniques, um, ideas that I have done over the years. Um, I have some sketches here that I'd like to show you. Now, let me go back to myself for a minute. Um, one of the things that I do have in my student is basically just over there, you can't see it, is a pile of very rough doodles or sketches and there's piles of it I'm looking at it right now and it's just piles and piles and piles of of nonsense really that I've sketched and I haven't got rid of it because one day I'll be sifting through them and I'll find something that I like so keep all your doodles even though you think they might be um, worthless right now later on you might find something from them that really help you with a painting. Um, okay, I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you some examples of, for instance, I did a painting once called Raccoon Under the Moon. You can see it on my website. And uh, I was really struggling to figure out a very simplistic way of expressing a raccoon and hiding him within nature. Um, so I basically kept this sketch and I'm glad I kept it. Normally I would have 
years ago thrown this stuff away but I'm so glad I kept it because it gives you an exploration of what I've actually tried to do when researching this raccoon and it's just a theory that I have you people always see the finished result they always see these finished sketches but you don't see the hours of work that go into actually figuring out how and what these things should look like you know i go through this they're, they're terrible drawings they're absolutely awful but they're quick doodles you know and they're priceless to me i mean look at that guy he looks like he's been hit by a truck um <laughs> so i ended up using this one in the end but i had to figure out the process before i got there very important to keep your doodles and, and everything you know likewise here again it's not a very good drawing it's not it's not actually that exciting but I did this very brief sketch here really quickly it's of a wolf but that then led me to draw another sketch which led to more finished idea of what I wanted to do you probably see that closer if I put it closer like so there you go quite a nice wolf I would like to paint that one day okay also I will go out into the wild it's only on our doorstep I'll take this really dodgy photography. We've got the deer underneath the tree, very, very contrasty and dark. The deer in the meadow, close up. And then a wide shot. Again, very contrasty. You can't really see the details of the trees and whatnot. But I'll use this stuff to then create a sketch. from, And it's very simple, this sketch. Extremely simple of just deer sitting in the meadow. Again, I wanted to show you this deer in the meadow, very simple sketch. All the deer sitting within the meadow with my abstract trees around. It's all there, the shapes are all there. You know, you look at this sketch here, the shapes are all there. It's obviously an outline of a turtle, a tortoise. But if you look very closely, all the shapes are within the sketch, likewise with this one here. You know, the bear walking within the shapes. You know, you can use these shapes as well, again, within Quirk, like so, to create these lovely, elaborate sort of doodles. They're just, look at all the light. If I, did, if I did a normal picture of an elephant, it wouldn't be half as interesting, but for some reason, this really, I'm drawn to it. Use ink Quirk as well. Ink Quirk's very important, it's very bold. It gives you a different sort of feel completely. I use ink Quirk a lot, and what I do is I, I get some water and I splatter it on a paper, and then I, I flick some ink onto it and you create these really elaborate like uh, splatters and they don't really look like anything and the, uh, the idea of this uh, um, exercise is to look at something and try and create something from nothing so there's nothing here it's just an elaborate doodle but you know what you add something to it you turn it around you add a deer with some birds amongst the trees and you've got this intimate forest scene you know you can take another doodle here and this doodle, when I made it, made this perfect outline of a bird. All I had to add was the eye and the lines. And it's a woodpecker on the side of the tree. So you can create these wonderful doodles and exercise your creative brain just by doing these splatters and, and really looking and focusing on, on the stuff. You know, it's very important. That, you know, I'm going to end with saying that my sketching is so, so very important to me. Um, I want you to, to, to enjoy doing these exercises. They are vital to me. You know, the, this bear will get, you know, it might just look like a very elaborate doodle or sketch, but this is the, this is where it all starts for me. You know, it doesn't look the same, but you can see, I'll, I'll show you a very small painting of where the, where the bear has come from. You know, these are one of my little paintings, these little tests that I do. I love to do quite frequently before I walk, go and work on a bigger piece. Just, just makes me more confident as an artist. You know, a lot of people say to me, how do you get the black lines? I will actually start the canvas as black. And obviously when I put my classes on next week, I can go into how I create my paintings from a sketch, but I start my canvases from black and I'll tell you why, why that has happened. Initially I did it because I hated a painting that I was working on. So I painted it over black. And then when I started painting the new one, I thought, wow, this is actually really, really interesting. Um, I really want to keep doing this 
two years ago, a friend of mine emailed me out of the blue. He says, I knew you were onto something. And he said to me that um, he recently went to a Da Vinci show. And Da Vinci said, he quoted, everything around us, everything in nature is dark until the light hits it. And that to me sums up the theory of starting with black on the canvas. So that's everything for now. Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed speaking to you about this process. Again, if you want to sign up for more classes, I will have some online classes being put on my website by next week, christiandoor.com. Um, please, I, I can't, I, I really would encourage everybody to do this every day. It's so good for you. Um, uh, if we if we need it, we need it now. You know, art is so important. It will really make you feel better. And at the end of the day, you've got something that you've created on your own, which is very, very important. So please continue dawdling. And uh, I look forward to seeing you at my next class. Thank you very much. Cheers.